Hi everybody, this is Mrs. DiGiulio and I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint a mannequin or really anything that's cylindrical. So like so much of what we do, we're going to start with just a base coat and I'm using blue in my composition here. So I've partially done the head and the torso, but I'm going to start here on this arm and I've got my mannequin in front of me. Remember, you should never try to paint anything without looking at it. You can't possibly know where the shadows and the highlights are that give it its form if you're not looking at it. And it always just floors me that students are so resisting to look resistant to looking at what they're they're painting. So I've got it right in front of me and every time I paint I'm going to put it right back where it was and hopefully have the same light conditions because of course that affects your lights and shadows that give it the form as well. Um, what I like to do is leave where my pencil lines are showing so and I'll paint back over them later but so that I can tell where one form meets another because if I painted over the whole thing I'd have to wait till it dried and then you know try to put the pencil marks back with some kind of light line like a white charcoal or something and that's just additional work and painting is enough work as it is now I think I'm going to go ahead and stop because these are still damp and it's easiest to blend your values and notice I've got my value scale right here that we made in class so I can try to get all seven of those values in here. But I'm going to go ahead and always scoop paint from the side of your blob of paint to use a technical term and I'm going to leave the blue that was on my brush on there and mix white into it to get kind of a, um, a light value about the first one, I'm sorry, the second one in my value scale. Then I'm going to look on my mannequin and try to put it right where it is. Okay, now obviously that looks messy and sloppy, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that and try to get kind of a medium value. And I'm going to blend that in right next to that lightest value and I can come back again and get the light if I need to and it looks like I might and I can also darken up the value to get right under the arm here and you know I test it really lightly and if it's not dark enough I just simply add more black but the tricky thing is if you've got gray that means you had some white on your brush as I did and that's okay if you don't let it get too, too, um, too, too neutral. The gray will turn your colors neutral. And uh, it just depends on how bright you want them to be. I'm going to go ahead, while I've got that dark value on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and paint it on there. Um, one thing I'm doing is painting down the length of the limb there. and probably at some point I'll want to come back with a, a second um, layer and go cross contour across the limb like that so that it helps the viewers eye see it as being a little bit more rounded remember cross contour lines when you're drawing are lines that go across the contour of the form and they tell the viewer that that's a rounded form that they're looking at. So as long as you keep your paint slightly damp, it's really simple to go back in there and add additional values. But as soon as it dries, then you're left either mixing up values to match or you're left dry brushing. And I actually love dry brushing. Dry brushing, you can see right in here where I drug a light coat of paint with a dry brush or an almost dry brush over the surface underneath it and I did it here as well and then you see the underneath color coming through which is really nice for um, for trying to establish unified values okay so I'm just moving down to my next part of the arm and here I'm going over it with dark values on the sides and then I'm going to come right up the middle, cross contour, and it's really light pressure I'm putting down here. I find that I can control the paint best if I don't press down hard and if I have the littlest amount of paint on my brush that will allow me to do the job I'm trying to do. If you've got a big loaded brush and are trying to do 
sort of a small area like this, you're just going to struggle and it's not any fun. It should be, painting should be, once you get kind of in your zone, as relaxing as petting a dog or a cat, you know, because you're sort of stroking the paint on and you kind of get this almost uh, meditative thought process going. All right, so here I'm adding my shadows again. And I'm thinking my shadows are looking awfully gray and it's because I'm rushing a little and not taking time to, to uh, clean my brush in between. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip over here. When your water starts looking like milky, um, that's when it's definitely time to change because it will start coloring, um, it'll start coloring your work. So when you try to rinse your brush in that, it's just going to become part of the pigment that's on your brush. Today in class we had a student that um, moved the mannequin while her classmates were trying to draw it. And so they were so funny, they made her drop and give them 10, 10 push-ups. And I loved that the class was being responsible for their, their own community of learning. They were holding her responsible. And then somebody else did something else, probably, you know, dipped their brush right into the center of the, of the paint and muddied it up. And they, he had to drop and give them 10, too. And I got it on camera. I think I'm going to put it on my blog to share it was a great example of students holding each other responsible. Okay, so you can kind of keep going back over this as much as you want. You know, you can let an area dry and it will slightly change as it's dried. You don't want to ever leave a streak like that unless you actually see the streak though. So notice how I'm doing cross contour strokes to kind of blend it in. And you know, it was Picasso that said, art is a lie that tells the truth. So in some cases, we're going to lie here and make our values a little bit more uh, dramatic or um, emphasize them a little bit more than they are in real life because it just helps the viewer see it as being more, um, being more three-dimensional and looking more lifelike. And while that black is still damp, I'm going to go in there with my middle value and I'm going to brush across it. Okay, so that's looking fairly realistic to me there. And so I think I'm going to move on to um, this ball here that represents the waistline. I've got a dark line here because I see a shadow that this torso casts down here. But then the rest is not quite that dark. So I'm going to paint my base value on there. The reason for putting the base coat down is because it is right in the middle, like on our value scale over here. And so that tells you then how much darker you need to go to get your shadows and how much lighter you need to go um, to get your highlights. It's kind of like middle C if you're playing piano. And I don't, but that's the idea. So I'm blending a little bit of dark value in down here while the base coat's still kind of damp because I see shadow there. And then this is all gonna be lighter here because it's a sphere and I want that central part to come out toward me. Sort of like I've done over here. Um, some people have real expressionistic styles of painting and that's all well and good. But for this project, we wanna to try to keep it um, fairly smooth. Um, you can do other assignments perhaps that are a little bit more um, expressive, but we want this to be realistic. And so we want to really learn to control the paint. You know, it's fine um, later to uh, become a little bit more expressive as you're developing as an artist, but right now we want to learn a really, really proper way to create a smooth surface. And then you can start embellishing later when you're a little more advanced so that it's a choice not just because it's the only thing you know how to do. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna move on over to the other, the other arm and I see, well, let me get my base coat on there first. That's always a good idea. You've gotta establish that middle value or that middle C. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly clean my brush and then blot it off so it's not wet 
a lot of mistakes happen when you start using a wet brush because you start painting with the acrylic like it's watercolor. And that would be okay, except that we're painting very opaque forms here, these wooden mannequins, and we don't want to use uh, water as a crutch to create light values because you can, when you're painting really uh, diluted like that with a lot of water, you can see through the paint, so it gives the illusion that you're using a light value, but really you haven't mixed that value at all. And this exercise is partially about learning to mix values, so it's important to not use water and translucency as a crutch. All right, so over here I see my dark value there. And you can do darks or lights first. It's kind of a personal preference. But definitely, while you've got that dark value on your brush, go ahead and do the parts of it that are, that are dark. And right in there, it's a little intersection between the top of the arm and the ball of the shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. And the whole process of painting is about adjusting values. The whole time you're painting, you're just kind of adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. You paint one thing and it changes the way something else looks because it's all relative. So then you've got to go back and alter the first part. And I think as you get more experienced, you have to do less and less of that. And I like to use so little paint that I am almost drawing on the surface of it rather than slopping a bunch of paint on there. I just think that's super hard to control. And um, notice that I'm putting this really bright value there like that, but I don't want that to stay like that. So I'm going to feather the edges and blend it into the neighboring medium value or base coat. And and blend that again into the darker values. And you've got to kind of play around with it and see like, you know, do you like those really bright highlights or are they distracting? And each person has to kind of decide for themselves because let's face it, we're not gonna make it look exactly like the real mannequin. So you've got to decide what, um, what interpretation of it you like. And I keep getting rid of my dark value over there on the left, so I'm going to come back over it and then kind of brush to the inside to cross contour it. Okay, and um, I think that I need a little bit more of a white highlight on that ball that represents the waist, where the waist bends, and it needs to be right in that area. So, you know, a sphere has got longitude and latitude lines on it, so, you know, you can kind of put it that way and then come back and go up and down because the curve goes both directions. And then I've got to decide, like, is that highlight accurate or is it a little too pronounced? And I think it's probably a little too pronounced. So I'm just going to feather over it a little bit. But it gives the whole thing more three-dimensional quality. And so it goes. You just keep on painting one base coat on an area that you want to work in and I usually can do you know about oh I don't know one or two segments of the body at once without letting the paint get so dry that it's hard to work with so I'm just gonna do this really quickly and the whole time I'm not just guessing where my my values are. I keep looking back up at that mannequin and kind of squinting to see it. Sometimes it's very hard to see. We don't have real controlled light situations in our room. So sometimes, honestly, it's almost a guess based on what the light's doing, maybe on other parts of the, of the object that I'm drawing. And sometimes it's a matter of squinting. For some reason, when you squint, you see lights and darks easier and uh, more pronounced. So squinting is a, is a good tool to use in an art class. And all right, I'm just going to 
add my lighter values and make sure they're blended in. And I probably should do one of the hands for you. And um, you'll notice up here on the shoulders how much lighter that value is than this one over here. That really is how the light hits the shoulders, but I do think I need just a tiniest little highlight in that shoulder right there. And try to get out of the habit if you're in it, or try not to develop the habit if you're not in it, of painting with your fingers. It's so tempting when the paint's not doing what you want it to do to uh, dive in there with your fingers, but it doesn't teach you painting technique. Um, it's kind of a desperation move, and you don't want to have to rely on desperation moves. I'm painting this entire mannequin with a flat brush because there's a lot of edges that we're dealing with here and I feel that I can control the edges a whole lot better with a flat brush than a round one and so I would recommend that. Um, watercolor, when you're painting with watercolor, there's like a little highlight right there. When you're painting with watercolor, a round brush is really good for sloshing on a wash. Um, but other than that, I don't care for them. And that highlight is a little bit bright. It is brighter than the other one in real life, but I'm going to tone it down just the tiniest bit. Okay, and then I'm going to cross contour my highlight right down this segment of the arm. And I notice I'm kind of going the length of it and across it. So the length of it is not cross contour, but this is where I'm sort of curving my brush stroke across there. And then I'm just kind of going up and down to feather those edges. And then let's get the hand done. So again, always the same, back to the base coat. I think the hand is the last thing I'll show you. Um, other than, hold on, I need to correct something about the torso. I did that earlier in the day and um, I need to get this shadow all the way down there and it's the same over here. Okay, that looks better. And then again, washing the brush. That kind of gets tedious, I have to admit, but it's so essential not to create a bunch of mud on your paper. So here I am. And by the way, I'm painting on a matte board and it's a great, great surface to paint on, I think. It's got a nice tooth to it, which means it captures the paint, but it's fairly smooth too. So it allows you to put it on really carefully. Craftsmanship is everything when you're painting realistically like this. Okay, and this is called monochromatic painting because mono means one and chroma means color. And so we are doing a painting in light and shadow of blue. And you can experiment with just mixing your paint kind of right on the object that you're painting, which is what I sort of did there, or mixing it on your palette and applying it. I tend to do a little of both. And I can't really tell you when I do one and when I do the other, but there's no one correct way to paint. It's kind of whatever works is whatever's correct. So let me just get a little bit of shadow on that hand and we are done. I see it as being really dark and see how that, even though the brush is fairly wide, the tip of it is really narrow, so it allows me to create a very narrow line there for the hand, almost like a pencil point. And then I think my little uh, wrist joint right there just needs the tiniest little dab of white for a highlight. Like right about 
there, and that's awfully bright, so I'm going to rinse my brush, blend it in. I dripped water there. Ooh, that's a, that's a mistake. Um, that was just being careless. Okay, so the highlight goes there. And then let me go over here and try to fix that. So that kind of looks bad. Okay, and then I can think I can take just a damp brush along the outside with all the paint washed off of it and just kind of blend that away so that it's not really too, too noticeable. That's one place where a little bit of finger action doesn't hurt. And that'll dry. And then I'm just going to clean up that edge to separate it from the background a little bit more. Okay. Uh, there we go. And a lot of time, the very last thing I do is come back with, just like I'm doing right there, a few more dry brushed white highlights because the paint underneath is dry so they won't blend in too much. And then it just gives it that extra little pop. Okay, and there you have a partially painted mannequin. Just knowing those few things about painting will apply to just about everything you paint.